All right, I'm in 4.5, cams in motion, and I'm specifically going to be demonstrating the snail cam. If you need to see the drawing with the dimensions, you can click on cam dimension here. Or you can go ahead and take a look at the OneNote binder where I've also included the same graphic. Quick disclaimer, in this example, I am going to be using a nominal diameter of 3, whereas your group should have chosen a 1.5 or a 2 inch. So the numbers I'm going to be entering here are going to be a little bit different because my nominal diameter is different than yours. Just know that you're going to plug in the one that you chose. So wherever you see D, that is equal to nominal diameter. So for example, this linear dimension from the center here up to the top edge says half of D. So that would be, for my example, 1.5. Half of 3 is 1.5. You're going to plug in your nominal diameter there. You also want to notice that there's a 3 16th diameter hole going through the middle and that the actual thickness of this cam is going to be 3 16 which will come into play when we go ahead to extrude our 2D sketch into a 3D model. So let's go ahead and create a new file in Inventor. So I'm going to go new English template standard inch IPT and create. Uh, I'm going to click OK. First thing I should also do after creating a new part is a save as I want to maintain good file management and I am going to go down to the stu uh, shared drive go into your folder student folders find your name and you want to go into the 4.5 cam in motion folder so go find that folder and then I want you to give it the proper name so we're gonna go snail cam dash um, now I'm doing a nominal diameter of three so you're gonna go ahead and type in whatever your nominal diameter is there now I'm gonna switch out and just save on my desktop I don't want you to do that you should be saving into your folder so the name changed up top now again we're working left to right so I'm gonna go start 2d sketch on the front XY plane I'm going to always start at the origin, which is 0, 0. Now, to get started, I want you to pay attention to the geometry of this cam. We have a perfect horizontal line right here. We have one, two, three, four different arcs. All right, and then we also have the hole. What we're going to want to do first is draw in this vertical line. To do that, I'm going to create some construction geometry. What does that mean? Construction is geometry that is not included in the sketch when I go to extrude it. It won't consider it part of my model. So I'm going to draw a circle for the top of the line and the bottom of the line based off of this center. And to do those circles, I'm going to use these two dimensions. I'm going to start with this dimension to determine the radius of the first circle I'm going to draw which is a quarter of my nominal diameter so for me that is going to be what is that 0.75 times 3 gives me point or I'm sorry 0.25 times 3 right which would give me 0.75 sorry I'm mixing up my words there so a quarter times your nominal diameter will give you the first radius you need. So I'm going to go ahead, turn on the construction option, which is right here. I'm going to click on the circle tool, and I'm going to click on the origin. Notice that right now it's using diameter, but I want radius. So I'm going to right click and change to radius. And again, to determine this number that I'm typing in, you're doing 0.25 times your nominal diameter and you can even type that in actually if you want to go and actually no I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna just do the math in my head or I can open up a calculator uh, I'm gonna go 0.75 which is there I'm gonna hit enter and then so that's this point right here this quadrant is the bottom of that vertical line now I'm gonna draw my second circle using this dimension which is just half the nominal diameter, which is radius. So half of 3 for me is 1.5. Again, your number is going to be different. 
So that is going to be 1.5, enter, and those two circles are concentric. They share the same center point. All right, so now that I have those two in, I can draw in my line. Now this line is actually part of the model, so I'm going to turn off construction. I'm going to go line tool. I'm going to zoom in up there so I can see where I'm working. And I'm going to snap to that quadrant, left click, snap to this quadrant, left click, hit escape. And we need to apply a constraint on this because this thing can move left to right. This was something that I was going to get into in the next unit, but it's come up here, so we're going to do it. I will explain this more in depth in unit 5, but just follow along. If I click on this little icon down here, it turns on the degrees of freedom, so where different points can still move. If you notice, we still need one dimension to lock this thing down. So this line can move left to right. So I'm going to hit and turn that back off. I'm going to use a vertical constraint, clicking right here. And I'm going to left click the midpoint of that line. You'll see the green dot pop up. And then I'm going to left click the origin. You'll notice it is now purple and it is fully constrained. And then we're going to go ahead and draw our arcs. So we got one, two, three, four. So let's go ahead and do those. So I'm going to go to the arc tool. That first one snaps to the end point of this line right here. So I'm going to left click there. And it goes, now you need to make sure that you snap to this x-axis, and that's it. Don't snap to other geometry like this. Just make sure you're going to go about, if you look where this construction circle is, about 25% past that. So I'm going to left click there. And then I'm going to determine the radius of this arc. Again, don't snap to other geometry. Just kind of go out. Don't worry about exact dimensions. We're just drawing a quick sketch. So your numbers don't have to be exact with mine. Just don't be snapping to other geometry. So I'm going to left click. Notice the green dot it made locating the center of that arc. All right, the next one goes from this endpoint. So I'm going to left click there. And it goes and it snaps to this vertical Y axis. So I'm going to left click about 50% in between these two circles. So about midway-ish. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure you're snapping to the Y. Left click, pull that out. Don't snap to other geometry. So about right there is fine. Again, notice the green dot that was created for the center of that one. And then our third one's gonna go from here. So left click, and it's going to snap to this X axis again. So I'm gonna left click somewhere over here and pull that out. Again, don't snap to other geometry. Go ahead and left click. And then our third and or our fourth and final one is going to go from here. So left click to the top of our vertical line. Left click, drag that out, and left click again. Hit escape to get out of the arc tool. Notice the four dots locating the center of our four arcs. And you're going to notice that we need 10 dimensions still to fully constrain this. So to do that, I'm going to first start by locking in this point, this point, and this point. And I'm going to use a horizontal constraint first. So I'm going to left click here. And then I'm going to left click this point, and then left click the origin. Notice that we went down to nine dimensions. While I'm still in the horizontal constraint, I'm going to left click this point, left click my origin. Go down to eight dimensions that lock down those two and then now i'm going to switch to vertical and i'm going to left click this point and then left click my origin we're down to seven hit escape to get out of the vertical constraint and i'm going to go to tangent so i'm going to tangent i'm going to left click this arc left click that arc we now have a tangent constraint there i'm going to do that again i'm going to left click here left click here i got tangent there and then I'm going to do it a third time, left click here, left click there, now that is tangent. We are down to four dimensions. I'm going to hit escape to get out of the tangent tool. And now we're going to use something called parameters to really lock these points into place. So we want this point to be 25% um, past um, this arc. So 100% would be from here to here, right? So how do we figure out that distance? Well, if we know the difference between these two, we can multiply that difference times 0.25 
to make sure that this point is 25% past. This one we're going to want 50% past. This one we're going to want 75% past. So we're going to use some basic equations in our parameters option. So I'm going to go up here to manage and go to parameters. Oh, and I forgot to do one thing. I'm going to escape out of that. Go back to sketch. We need to add in three dimensions really quick. I'm going to go dimension here. I'm going to click the origin and then this point to drop in that dimension. I'm going to do another one and go from here to here. Add that one in. And then a third and final one going from there to there. So get those three dimensions in. You need those. And then I'm going to go back to manage parameters. I'm going to rename some measurements here. D0 was the 0.75. So I'm going to rename that R1 to remember that that was my first radius that I drew. And then the 1.5 was, let's say, R2. And then now we got those two labeled. Now, what is D2? D2 is this dot right here. So we wanted that one to be 25% past that um, line there. So what's the equation for that? Well, that's going to be simply R1, which is the 0.75. So I'm going to type in R1 plus um, the difference between R1 and R2 times 0.25. So I'm going to do... 0 0.25 times, which is your asterisk symbol, parentheses, R2 minus R1, and close my parentheses. As soon as I click off of this, you'll notice that it went ahead and calculated that using those two measurements to locate that point exactly 25% past. Notice that you have the FX, which stands for parameters on that dimension. Now I'm going to do this point and this point. To do that, I'm going to simply highlight this equation, copy it, so Control-C. I'm going to go to here and paste it, but we want this one to be 50% past, so I'm going to change that number to 0.5. I'm going to do it a third and final time, paste it, but this one we want 75% past click off of it and now all three of those points are locked in. I'm going to hit done and then we still need one final dimension and we need one more dimension here so I'm going to go ahead and pan over I'm going to go back into my sketch tab we need to add one final tangent constraint and I'm going to go ahead and click on tangent click on this arc and this construction arc. And now you'll notice that it is all purple, fully constrained. So I'm going to go ahead and hit finish sketch. And I'm going to do an extrude. And if you remember, our extrusion is going to be 3 16 I'm going to go the other way with it. And I'm going to say OK. And then finally, we need to add in a hole right in the middle that was at the origin at with a 3 16 diameter going all the way through. And to do the hole, we're going to do start 2D sketch on this face. Notice the origin, which is the middle where that hole should be at, is right there. So we're going to add a point to locate that center of the hole right there. I'm going to say finish sketch. Now I'm going to use the hole tool, which will automatically snap to that point. And we're going to go with a 3 16 diameter through hole. So I'm just going to leave all that and say OK. And go ahead and make sure you save this. And you are all done with the snail cam.